let's keep on praying right now. I am persuaded that God is going to speak to each and every one of you today. I'm convinced that today is not just another Sunday, but I, I'm convinced that God has a spe specific word for each one of you. It is not only welcoming the new 2020, but God has prepared a promise, a hope, an expected end for each and every one of us. And His plan is great. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare the year to advance. We are going to advance together, individually, family, as a church, we are going to advance together. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. How many of you want to open your heart and receive the word? Say with me, Lord Jesus, I open my heart. Speak to me. Change my life. In Jesus' name. Before you sit down, this is what I request from every one of you today, you know, uh, actually it's not only today, but I want to ask you to respond because I want you to engage in the, in the listening as you are listening to the word of God, I want you to engage and I want you to respond. Can you say respond? So everybody, not only on, on this side only, but... Uh, everybody here I want you to respond I want you to engage because um, God will speak to everyone of you and I want you to uh, agree with your own prayer that you just prayed just now because God is going to speak to you and when God speaks to you one word from God can change your life may not be long but one word from God can change your life so I want you to respond can you can you say respond one more time Tell your neighbor, respond. Okay, so you can say amen. You can say, you know, you, you, you respond. You know, don't, don't just keep quiet, you know, because God is going to touch you spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, spirit, soul, and body. Hello? Spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus. Ah, you're still not responding. Okay. <laughs> God is going to touch you. God is going to touch your spirit, your soul, your emotion, your feeling, your mental, your body. In the name of Jesus. It's so weak. You cannot sit down. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's a lot better. Thank you very much. May we see it. <laughs> Uh, why, why every Sunday the preacher has to stand up and the congregation has to sit down? <laughs> Maybe we can change, you know, uh, the order that I sit down and you stand up. <laughs> uh, just a thought. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, it gives. All right, it's good. All right. Okay, Happy New Year again. Good, good, good. Happy New Year again. Happy New Year. All right. Today I'm going to go full speed. Can you say full speed? Full speed. Because sometime after holiday, you may have the tendency to, uh, to, to lay back and uh, just slow down. And, uh, but no, 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 no. I, it, this is the year to advance. And I believe that uh, we are going to go full speed. Amen. Because uh, actually it is better than uh, what God has planned is not only full speed, but God's speed. God's speed, that means it's the speed of God, not, not the speed of man, not man's speed, but God's speed. So um, today I'm going to continue this series and uh, this is the fifth week. This is the fifth series, and um, when I prayed, you know, hey, this is the new year, you know, how about if you give me a, a new word? But God says this is something that you need to, 
to convey to the people that you are going to be all of you you are going to be rooted in the word okay because sometimes uh, you expect something to you, you expect to hear something new something new and, and and you easily forget what you have learned last week and i'm not saying that i'm going to review what i have preached last week or three weeks ago four weeks ago no but i'm going to build on it and i want to encourage you to visit our website so that you can continue you can you can digest the uh, Part one, two, three, and four. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, good. So um, the title is a new expectation through obedience, and the subtitle is the journey of a renewed mind. And uh, new year, new year, new expectation. You know, I said last week, and maybe some of you in the new year, you buy new shoes, new shirt. You know. But if your mind is not renewed, you do not change. You can, you can get a new cell phone with a new phone number. You can move to a different address. You get a new address. But if your mind is not renewed, you do not change. And God wants to renew our mind. So it is, it is, it is very important. You know, um, we, we sometimes we want something new on the outward, but we neglect the inward, which actually the, the one that can actually transform us is from the inward to the outward, not the other way around. You can change your, your, your hairstyle even, you know. You can, you, can, you can get a new glasses, but if your mind is not renewed, you know, you are not going to advance. I pray that in this journey, all of us, can you say journey? Okay, in this journey. So it is not a one-week deal. It is not a one-time deal. This is a lifetime deal. This is a lifetime process. I pray that all of us will really have a new, new expectation through obedience, new expectation. And the expectation that I want to begin with is uh, a new expectation from God, not our own expectation that we put to God. But we get to know God, and as we get to know God, then we know who he is and we know his plan and we put our expectation according to God has expectation, not the other way around. Because if we turn it the other way around, we may be disappointed, my friends. All right. Um, the Bible mentioned about the story of Naaman. Naaman was a commander, a Syrian general, a Syrian commander. And uh, he got lepers. And um, he went away in rage when he came to Elisha. Elisha, he was a mighty prophet of God. Can you imagine? He got double portion anointing from this major prophet named Elijah. So he was so powerful. And Naaman, being the commander, great general in Syria, he heard that there is a prophet in Israel that can, that can heal his leper. So he went there. And you know what happened? What he heard is not only that there is a prophet that can heal him. Apparently, he had an expectation. Can you say expectation? And his expectation was this. Uh, when I got there, you know, I will bring all these uh, uh, offerings, you know. I will bring all this, this special gifts for the prophet. And uh, I will come to his house and uh, I expect him, this prophet, he will come out of his house and he will move his hands over me, you know, and heal me. But uh, that was his expectation. And when he got to Elisha's house, <laughs> you know what happened? The Lord told Elisha not to even get out of the house. And Naaman was in rage. And he went out in rage. He was angry, completely angry, until one of his servants reminded him, Oh, uh, uh, sir, excuse me. If the prophet asked you to do something that is more difficult, would you not do it? This is very simple. Now the point is this. He finally re 
he, he changed his, his mind and then he came back. And then he came back, he only named the general, the commander. He only met the servant of Elisha. And the servant told him what to do. And you know that uh, he was asked to dip himself in the, uh, in, in the river seven times. And uh, you know what happened? The moral of the story is, Naaman almost missed his miracle because he has a wrong expectation of how God would work. Entering 2020, be careful, my friends. Is it possible that we have expectation that is not biblical? Is it possible that you may have expectation that, that you set up in your own mind because you heard from somebody? Because you heard of the testimony of somebody. Testimonies are good, but God is creative. I said it several times already that God is immutable in his character, but he is, he is unpredictable in his, in his activity. He is so creative. Naaman almost missed his miracle. I learned that an expectation can generate a certain mental image and hope that things will happen according to what we want it done. Be careful with that. So is it possible that we missed out on what God wants to do for us? Is it possible? Because he doesn't always do it the way we think he should. We missed it. Because we had certain expectation based on our perception or preconceived ideas. We have certain way of thinking working in our mind about how God is going to bless you. How God is going to heal you. How God is going to expand your company. How God is going to grow you. We have, we have certain, certain, certain mindset that uh, when God said something or when God does something that is not according to our expectation, it is easy for us to get disappointed and let our faith drop. Be careful with that. I remember some time ago I got sick. I prayed, I prayed, oh God, heal me, heal me, heal me. So not only pray for other people, but I pray for myself. So I lay my hands on myself. Hello? So when you get sick before, uh, before you go to anybody, you know, lay hands on yourself. Because you have the power to pray for yourself. Okay? So I prayed, oh God, God. Oh, and, 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 and the next day I was still not good. And the next day I was still not good. Again, you know, so I, 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 I prayed and, 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 uh, and I decided to take medicine. It's nothing wrong to take medicine. It's not sin to take medicine. It's okay. It's okay. But uh, when I was about to take my medicine, you know, um, there was a voice inside of me that said, I want you to fast. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I'm already weak and I'm sick. Uh, but there was a, a voice. So I have a choice. Can you say choice? So I have a choice whether I should learn. Can you say learn? The process of learning is lifetime. So I have a choice whether I should learn to obey or I should depend on my intellect. And I chose to force myself to humble myself before the Lord and I fasted and I prayed and I sought the Lord and I got healed without medicine. So I want you to know that uh, in actuality, you can see that in many instances in the Bible, you can see that God did many, many surprising things beyond our human imagination. So when we are talking about expectation, don't limit ourselves with what we already heard, what we already knew, what we heard from somebody else, because God is mighty. 
And God is mighty in you. I, I, I thought somebody uh, told you to respond. Many years ago, I was invited to preach in, uh, I, I thought it was in Minneapolis. It was a, an uh, African-American congregation. And my goodness, they are so alive. They are so alive. All of them, all of them. It's like 99.9% .9 they are all black. And they responded. They were, oh, come on, preach it, pastor, preach it. Preach it. Oh, yeah, okay. Preach it. And then I, I came to a point when I hit the target, you know. And then they begin to say, uh, say it again. Oh, say it again. So I said it again. <laughs> and, uh, after I said it again, they, uh, a bunch of people said, say it again. So I said it again, you know. <laughs> and as I did that, you know, two, three ladies, you know, stood up and then uh, with, a, with a handkerchief, you know, that's, yeah, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Why wow, was so alive and here, okay, in our congregation. Okay, uh, all right. We need to uh, somehow improve, all right? So where was I? How many of you know that God, in the Bible, you know, God did many, many surprising things. How about this? How about, um, how about if you were the disciples and you saw Jesus incognito walk on water. We read that scripture already, but now, come on, be real. You know, if I were there in the boat, you know, with 11 of my friends, you know, and uh, suddenly uh, at night, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, I saw a figure and it looks like a person walking on water. I think my first reaction was I got goosebumps. Before I talk to uh, uh, anyone else, you know, I got this bubble. Then maybe I begin to whisper, Tom, did you see that? And maybe Pastor Tom would say, I thought I was the only one you said that to. You saw that to? Yeah. And then the other 10 listened to our conversation and, whoa, whoa, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. Come on. Jesus did not tell the disciples. Why don't you go ahead, cross the lake, and I will see you, I will walk on water. That would be easier for them, right? That would be easier for me. So if I were there, you know, I, I would be afraid too. Come on, be honest with me, if you were there. You know, this is, uh, <laughs> and uh, there, there are many, many other things, you know, how about the, the story of uh, when Jesus turned the water to wine? I shared that uh, last week, but when I look at the scripture again, I got another perspective. You know what happened, you know, after, after uh, uh, Jesus told the servants to fill the water pots with water, you know, immediately Jesus said, now get some and uh, bring it to the head of the feast, the MC, the feast master. And <laughs> Jesus did not tell the servant, don't worry, uh, the water has changed to wine. The servant didn't know. If you were the servant, maybe you would not do that. If I, if I were the servant, I, maybe, no, I don't want to get fired. What would my boss think? <laughs> what is this? Hello? Be real now. So our expectation is different. And in our, in our life, I don't know what situation you have right now. But God is so creative and many, many, many other things. Why would God risk his reputation by letting Abram to wait 25 years before he had a child? That is, that is risky. But Abraham obeyed, 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 obeyed. 
And Abraham obeyed even to sacrifice the promised child because God told him to. How about a talking donkey? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know about you, but if I were that man, the prophet, when my donkey talked to me, I would jump. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the prophet was so, oh, I don't know, uh, blinded that he conversed with the donkey. Hello, this is talking about how creative our, our God is. Uh, the next, next, uh, next, next story is about uh, you need money uh, to pay tax? Go fishing and find coins. I don't know. When Peter walked to the lake, you know, I don't know uh, if he was alone. Uh, just, 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 just imagine that he was with somebody. And uh, Jesus said, go, go, go fishing and uh, you will put a hook in the, the fish, the first fish that you caught, you know, you will you open his mouth and uh, there is a coin right there to pay tax. Probably on the way, Peter would say, really? really? And um, I think it is not a word of knowledge that accidentally a fish swallows somebody's coin. I, 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 the, and Jesus operated in the word of knowledge. Oh, yeah, I saw a fish that swallowed somebody's coin, drop on the water. But I believe, <laughs> I believe Jesus, when he said that, he created that coin in the fish mouth. Creative working power. As you obeyed, but you don't always know the process. And we don't like the process. So with all this example, what's the point? What's, what's the point? All these things never came to their minds. So can we begin 2020 with this understanding that we can have a new expectation through obedience that what with what we have already known, we still may not know everything about God. They never thought God would do it in that particular way. So what do we need to do? We need to allow the Holy Spirit. We need to allow who? One more time. Ten times louder. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to renew our mind, to renew our mind so that we can have the mind of Christ. To renew our mind, that is the subtitle, to renew our mind. We need to renew our mind, renew our mind, and, but we cannot do it by ourselves. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. And with that, I want to begin with Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? By the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Let me read to you from the Passion Translation. It says, stop imitating ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly. Can you say inwardly? inwardly. One more time. Inwardly. Say inwardly and, 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 and do this. Inwardly. inwardly. One more time. Inwardly. inwardly. Okay. Okay. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. Not what you think, how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. This is God's plan for all of us. Yes, 
the plan of redemption, the song that we sing, God will redeem not only your spirit, but also your, your soul and your body. When you receive Jesus, your spirit is redeemed, but your soul and your body is still in the process. Our soul needs process. Our minds need process. And uh, you need to understand that your mind, our mind, includes all these things, you know. Your perceptions. Can you say perceptions? What is perceptions? Perceptions is insight or intuition gained by perceiving. And what is, in, what is your mind includes? Your mind also includes your cognitions, the act or process of knowing. That enforce that. You know, your imaginations, your imaginations, which is the ability to form mental images of things that are not present to the senses or not considered to be real. And mine includes your reasonings. It is the act or process of drawing conclusions from facts or evidences. And then the next one is your analytical approach. Relating to analysis or analytics. It includes all of that plus. Can you say plus? At the core, at the core of all, the, all, all this, you know, at the core of your soul is your heart. Is your heart. So if you only say that your mind, uh, your soul is only consists of your mind, it is not complete. But your heart. But there is a slight difference that many times we cannot differentiate it. Sometimes it is so difficult. Is it my heart or is it my head? Is it my intellect or is it my intelligence? It is similar. If you Google it, if you search, it's, it's like, oh, it's, it's the same. It's the same. What is the difference between intellect and intelligence? Intellect is in your head. But intelligence, if I can describe it so that it will be clear. The Bible mentioned in Psalms 119 verse 11, it says that your word have I hid in my Oh, uh, heart or mind? Not mine. Heart. Your word I have hidden. Your word, God, I have hidden in my so that I will not sin against you. Because many times when we fall into sin, we try to entertain our head. That it is okay. But when you begin to entertain your head, your heart begins to pound hard. Oh, now you know the difference. So the core is the heart. And we need to understand that the journey is an inner journey. It is an inner journey. It is an <laughs> inward journey. You know, the, um, tra uh, 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 the Passion Translation said, but be inwardly, can you say inwardly? Inwardly, inwardly transformed. <laughs> inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. Inwardly, inwardly. So inside, in the journey, in the journey of life, Yes, in the journey, you and I, we may or we will or we had faced storms. Wow, you know, storms. And we were afraid, you know, we are, we, and, 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 and you read in the Bible, many men and women of God, they were afraid, including David, the mighty warrior. But David said, when I am afraid, I put my trust in him. 
So if you say, I have no fear, I have no fear, I think that is not true. At a certain point in your journey of life, you will have fear. David, we need to learn from David. When I am afraid, I put my trust in him. So Jesus, in the same boat with the disciples, in the journey, can you say journey? In the journey, the disciples were afraid, but inwardly, Jesus, there he is, peace. Jesus is the embodiment of peace. Peace is in his heart. The peace inwardly that he has can overcome the storm outside. So, entering 2020, let us as the Holy Spirit, Lord, help me because I cannot do it with my, with my own strength. I cannot do it with my own strength, Lord. This journey, I don't know. You know, it's a long journey. It's not a one-year deal, you know. We just begin. This is the, the first Sunday of 2020. Oh, one year is quite a long time. How about 10 years? How about 20 years? But, uh, you know, uh, he, he holds the future. Somebody said, uh, we don't know the future may hold, you know, but we know, uh, if you know Jesus, you, you know who holds the future, and that is Jesus. Amen? Amen? Oh, praise the Lord. So, uh, the inner journey, can you say inner journey? The inner journey is about destiny, and it requires you, it, it requires that you prayerfully ask yourself some questions. Some question, ask yourself question, and um, I want to, I want to say this encouragement to all of you, be sure, be 100% certain that God can, God has been speaking to you and you can hear his voice. If you say, I cannot hear God's voice, it is not true because the fact that you have received Jesus, you have heard his voice. How about if you have not received Jesus? Even if you have not received Jesus, God has talked to you in many different ways. So if you say, oh, now I can hear Jesus, I can hear God talk to me, what you are saying is actually now, oh, 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 I've never heard him talking to me this way. But God has been talking to us, to you, in many different ways. So God will talk to you, and uh, so when God talks to you, you ask questions, and when, it is encouraging to know that we can converse with God. It's not one-way communication. When we pray, uh, it's not always, you know, a saying prayer, but uh, there is the second kind of prayer. It's a listening prayer. It's time for us to be quiet and listen. And he will talk. And uh, in my journey, 40 years following Jesus, I learned and I'm still learning that I ask questions. I ask questions, oh God, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? How come I, I experience this? What do I have to say? I'm going to meet this person. What do you want me to say? What do you want me not to say? So I ask him questions. So we need to ask ourselves questions. And uh, when we talk about that, go back to that verse again in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, be transformed, be transformed. Can you say transform? In the original language, most of you know this word. The original language is metamorpho. It's like metamorphosis. It's like when the uh, larva caterpillar becomes butterfly are you with me that transformation that metamorpho in the original language it is like that uh, that uh, that insect that uh, little itty bitty things you know 
it goes to a cocoon. So when I talk about the inward journey, it is the soul journey. Can you say soul? soul. The soul journey is a solo journey. Meaning, you will have to go through it by yourself. You go through that cocoon, you cannot bring your friends. I have a friend at the gym, and he said, oh, I woke up in the morning. Um, you, you come here by yourself? Oh, um, my wife comes uh, to this gym also, but uh, she goes to church first. She goes to church first, and uh, I don't need to go to church. You know, she will go on my behalf. <laughs> nice try. The soul journey is a solo journey. Not your spouse can help you, but the Holy Spirit. And when you go through that process, when you go through that cocoon, you crawl. The process nobody likes. I don't. But after the process, you no longer crawl. You, you, you fly. Process. Yes. That's why obedience is important. Praise the Lord. And uh, in that process, as I have shared to you that you all have heard the voice of God, but um, we usually, we want God to give us a word in the imperative mode. What is imperative mode? Imperative is like a command. Do this. Do that. Go there. Make a shift. It's imperative mode. But I also learned that God wants to interact with you. And he talks in interrogative mode. Interrogative mode is like asking question. Why? Do you want to know? Ask me why. Uh, not everybody. Let's close in prayer. Do you want to know? Ask me why. why? Good. Because you need to? Uh, all right. All right. Hmm. All right. Why? Because God wants to know your answer. There are many, many examples in the Bible that God asked question. God asked uh, Jeremiah, what do you see? God asked Moses, what is in your hand? God asked questions. <laughs> it, it's like, he, even from the beginning, when Adam fell into sin, God asked him. He did, not, he did not say, you have fallen into sin, huh? No. God said, where are you? He asked questions. Why he, he asked questions? Because he wants, to, he wants you to <laughs> learn how to think. God doesn't want to tell you what to think. God wants to teach us how to think. So the renewal of the mind is not being told what to think, but how to think. If you are being told what to think, you are not going to grow. We are not going to grow. But if we, 
we are taught to learn how to think then we will grow i'm i'm <laughs> i'm amazed with uh, abraham you know the story of abraham i preached about this for 5 weeks ago after waiting for the son of promise for 25 years then god asked isaac to be sacrificed and abraham obeyed right said right. right okay okay and uh, abraham obeyed and, and in in hebrew chapter 11 verse 19 it says abraham reasoned that god could raise the dead i am so amazed with this i am so amazed with abraham in those days nobody was raised from the dead Abraham reasoned. He think. He considered that God is able to raise the dead. Whoa. Because I believe he got the revelation from the Holy Spirit. Because he had a relationship with the Heavenly Father. Entering 2020, let's believe that God will reveal to you that he never showed you before. Can you say amen? You want to have a new expectation? Yes. You want to have a new expectation? Yes. You want to have a new expectation? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. When, when, when you have a relationship with God, you know, uh, even, even in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, there are many stories that they, they, they have new, new understanding, they have knowledge, they have understanding, they have, they have super supernatural understanding that even when this this four Hebrew boys was, was captive in Babylon, you know, and they didn't know the language. They have to learn the language. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you know, uh, Daniel, you know. They, they learned the language. And you know what? When the king tested them and the king said, wow, you are ten times smarter than the smartest people in Babylon. Is Babylon the now Iraq? We need to pray with the situation in the Middle East. Later we will pray. It is a serious thing that is happening right now that we as God's people, we need to pray. So when you have that relationship, your cognitions, your knowledge, your understanding, will also improve beyond your diploma beyond your degree my mentor dr dr c peter wagner said that um, education is not having a diploma hanging on your wall the moment you stop learning you become an uneducated person that's why i have several influential and wealthy friends that their education is actually <laughs> uh, graduated from high school and some was kicked out from college like somebody I know. The spirit of the living God, even the king, King Nebuchadnezzar said, the spirit of the holy God is in you. Whoa. Hello. Now, uh, think about this. In the day of Pentecost, these this people, 3,000 people, they experienced the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They experienced that and they asked question. What did they ask? What does it mean? 
Hello? So when things happen in your life, what does it mean, Lord? Are you trying to talk to me? What does it mean? Do I need to slow down? Talking to myself here. What does it mean, Lord? Why this thing happened to me? So, in this journey, we need to learn to ask questions. And the journey involves metanoia. Can you say metanoia? What is metanoia? Metanoia is the uh, original word for repentance. Repentance. Can you say repentance? repentance. One more time, repentance. repentance. So repentance, but, but, but repentance, uh, not repentance from, but repentance to. You know, when we live in sin and we, we, we did bad things, you know, we, we lie, we did so many bad things, you know, we repented. I repented. I received Jesus. I repented, you know. But how many of you know that maybe you are one of them that, that you still carry that guilt in your life that you still repent from the past, from the past. But actually what God wants us to do is uh, to repentance to, repentance to. Repentance, you know, and, 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 and I, I mentioned it last week and I'm going to build on it again that in, in, in Greek and uh, 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 um, Paul and Jesus, when they use the word repentance, it does not mean to beat people up. Repent! It's not what it means. Repentance is an educational term. Jesus only called certain groups of people with names. Who are those people? Those people are the religious crowd. I said religious crowd. Religious crowd. The Pharisees. The uh, scribes, the Sadducees, they know the Bible, they know the Torah. They are religious. And um, Jesus addressed them quite strong. You are like grave, white on the outside, but bones on the inside. You are like, uh, you know, it's just... Jesus is tough on them. But to the multitudes, he said, repent. Come on, let's grow. Come on, repent. Your mind can be renewed. You can be better. Yes, let's, let's repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. That's, that's what he said. And, uh, but to the religious crowd, to the religious crowd, Jesus talk with sharp language, words. Why? Because the religious crowd, they think they don't have problem. Everybody else does. How many of you have read the Bible and when you read the story about the Pharisees, Pharisees, one of the religious crowds, you get frustrated, you get agitated. <laughs> Me too. How many of you experience what I experience? As I read the Bible, I read about the Pharisee, oh, 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 oh. and then the Bible reads me. Not only I read the Bible. When the Bible reads me, as I read the Bible, I see I'm a Pharisee. There is a Pharisee in me.
So the process in the journey is we need to continually learn to repent to, not repent from. It implies that through the stages of development from childhood to adulthood, we go through series of shifts, series of changes. If I may use the word series of transformation. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you can remember when your mama put you in diapers? How many of you know that you wear diapers before? <laughs> and then, in the process, you change, or your mama changed from diapers to real material. No more diapers. And uh, why? Because actually you have gone through the stage of metanoia, a shift, not repentance from, but repentance to. You are getting better. That's what the song is, right? Getting better. You're getting better. You are getting better. <laughs> tell, tell, tell your neighbor, you are getting better. Now change, change it a little bit. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. <laughs> That's louder. <laughs> You're getting better. You, you have to also believe that your friend is going to get better, right? So you are getting better. And you are getting better because you change from something that you cannot control you cannot control, now you can control the, your bodily function. Hello? You can manage, you can take care of your needs, of those functions. And this is a form of repentance. You move forward. You advance. You are transformed. How many of you remember the shift from grammar school to middle school? Grammar school? Okay. You sit with your friends in the classrooms and uh, the same classmates all the way from kindergarten to sixth grade, right? Hello? But when you go to middle school, then you have a choice. You have an option. You have your individual schedules, right? And you may not be in the same... You, you, you are in the room, but your friends are different. That is a form of repentance. You go to the next level. When you go to college, it's the same thing. And when you go from childhood to adulthood, it is also the same thing. It is a process of repentance. And we have to go through progressive shift, progressive journey. And as we enter 2020, may I remind all of us that we are going to go through every chapter, every cycle, every season on our life that will involve metanoia. Our way of thinking is shifting. And I learned from Paul, the apostle, he said that uh, 
When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. That's why as I built the momentum on the decade of pay, 5780 in the Hebraic calendar, in Greco-Roman calendar 2020, it is the time to watch our mouth. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. You just say it whenever you want to say it, whatever you want to say it, wherever you want to say it. When a baby needs something, they can cry anytime, anywhere, and whatever they want to do, they will do it. Right? But Paul said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. So watch your mouth. Begin to declare according to the expectation that God has for us. And the expectation is already made for you. It's already ready for you. Now God is making ready for you to get what God has already made it ready for you. God is making you ready. Jesus. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, oh, the transformation of how you think. I put it away. But in the reality, some people don't. How many of you have been around grown men or grown women that still behave like they're teenagers? Don't look at your neighbor. They are getting older, but their behavior is like teenagers. They have not repented to. They are in church. They repented from, but not repented to. The speech is the same, the way they think is the same, the way they understood is the same. They never repent, repented. They never made the shift. I pray that as we welcome 2020, all of us, me included, let's allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. <laughs> and allow the Holy Spirit to Transform us. Music team, come forward. Choose a song that is related to this message. <laughs> Even the song that is not in your format. I want to ask you to stand up. And I want you to do something. I want to ask you to allow the Holy Spirit again. And uh, then uh, we'll pray. You agree with me? Yes. No respond. You agree with me? Yes. I still need to respond. You know, I'm not done yet. This is what I ask you to do. Close your eyes. I want you to complete the sentence because I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you a script. It's an incomplete, but uh, I want you to complete it. I want you to fill in the blank. As you close your eyes, 
how about if I give you this these scripts I used to be impatient I used to be impatient now I am dot 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 I used to be easily frustrated Now I am dot 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 I did not have good attitude on many things Now I am fill in the blank I was lazy. Now dot dot dot. Be honest to yourself. I remember somebody said it is easy to it is easier to lie to the whole world than to be honest to yourself. Now is the time for you to for all of us to be honest to ourselves. Be honest to yourself. Come on. 2 years ago I could not control my mouth, my speech. Now dot 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 I could not forgive last year two years ago i could not forgive entering 2020 now dot 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 i could not control my emotions now I always have misunderstanding and argument with my friends with my family. Now dot 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 I was hurt, I was disappointed many years ago. Now bringing you to a new expectation through obedience because God's plan for each one of you is not a plan of calamity but a plan of good a plan of welfare shalom peace prosper and my plan is plan for future and an expected end the plan that i have for you will not disappoint you you will get it according to my way my time my creat my my creative working power but for sure for sure this is a miracle house for sure we are working together with the god that is so powerful he wants to work together with you do you want to hold your past still or do you want to let go of your past and move on advance move forward Jesus now is the time 
allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate into your heart. There are times that if you cannot differentiate between, between your mind and your heart, it's very simple actually. There are times that according to your mind, according to your intellect, it's it's good, but your heart doesn't have peace. How come there is a difference? Because the Spirit of God works from the inner core, which is our hearts. Inwardly affect the outward. So Father, I pray right now, this is a good time. This is a good, <laughs> a good word of repentance. It is not to beat us up. It is it's not to discourage us, but to encourage us that you want to, you want us to move forward. You want us to go forward. You want us to draw near to you. You want us to move with a in a purposeful way. And Father, I pray that your word, your word. Is hidden in your people's heart right now that we will not sin against you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, make some noise to the Lord. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Joyful noise to the Lord. Come on. Break loose right now. Break loose right now. Open your mouth. It's okay to be loud. It's okay to be loud. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yeah! Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Break loose right now. Yes, this is a miracle house. Yes, this is a miracle house. So I declare, I declare the fulfillment of the word of God. Miracle will take place even more. 2020. Yes, Lord, you open the door. You have opened creative ideas in the name of Jesus. Healing take place. No tumor. No cancer. In the name of Jesus. Tumor and cancer be gone right now in the name of Jesus. I declare open doors right now. I declare open doors. I declare creative ideas. I declare breakthroughs right now in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough for any relationship that has been that has been in bondage for many years. Breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, I declare right now blessing. I declare blessing. Oh, I declare open ears, open hearts. Our ears are open, our hearts are obedient to the promises of God in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now the plan that God has for us shall be established in our hearts. Lord, watch. help us to guard our mouth as we guard our hearts. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. As we go, I want you to remember, don't ask too many how. How are you going to do this, Lord? How are we going to do this? Lord, Lord how, how, how? Just believe Him. When Mary heard a message from the angel Gabriel, the angel did not tell her how. Mary just said, be it unto me according to your word. So Father, right now, put your hand in your mouth right now. Make a declaration. Lord, as, as I guard my heart, I cannot hear you. Ten times louder. I will watch my mouth. Thank you for giving me a good heart. Your word I have hidden in my heart that out of the abundance of my heart my mouth will declare the goodness of the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Come on. Make, make a joyful noise again. Make a joyful noise again. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now, oh God, I pray. I want you to join hands right now. Let's pray for the condition in the Middle East right now. Lord, we pray for President Trump. What happened in, in Iran the past several days, oh God. Lord, with the strike, Lord, we pray that you give President Trump and the whole cabinet wisdom. And Lord, we speak peace. Oh Lord, peace. Lord, let the Prince of Peace take over. You are the Prince of Peace. And right now, all over the world, oh God, all over the world, let there be no provocation, oh God. No provocation. Lord, you, you give us a word to pray for our leaders. You give us a word to pray for those who are in authority. So that is what we are doing right now as a church. So we pray. Oh, we pray for wisdom. We pray for unity. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. We pray for insight that the leaders, the President Trump and the whole cabinet will make the right decision, oh God, according to your plan. And Lord, we pray for safety for all of us. We pray for safety, safety. Come on, all of you. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord, we, I pray, I declare safety for all of us. I declare safety for all of our people right now in the name of Jesus. And we, as we join our hearts, we join our hands, we make this declaration right now. Let the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus, rule and reign on the earth. Thank you, Jesus. And as we go home, we receive your word that your plan is planned for welfare. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Bless your people. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody shout. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. God bless you.